I don't know how many of you remember this song of Frank Sinatra, My Way. I want to sing a little bit this melody and says, And now the end is here, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I say it clear, I stay my case, of which I'm certain. I live a life that's full, I'll traffic in every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, this is a famous song that went around the world in the 17th, 18th, and even today in many countries. But this war, were, or these lyrics of this uh, song, were not made by Francis Sinatra. Actually, the author of this uh, song was Paul Anka. I don't know if you remember Paul Anka. In an interview of Sinatra's daughter, she said that her father, he never felt comfortable with this song. He actually said that this song looked so selfish, so arrogant for himself, and he didn't like it, even though it became so popular to many people even today. Yes, sometimes we don't like our ways. Sometimes we are not happy for the ways that, that we take or the path that we uh, walk every day in our life. And we want to change directions all the time. We make one step here, one step there, and probably we don't feel satisfied with the decisions that we took. What we have to do in such a case? How can we be sure that the steps and the decisions that we make every day are according to God's plan in our life? That is the message of today. That is the reason that we are here. Listen to the Holy Spirit and the word that He have through the study of the book of Acts. Yes, we have these divine directions. Because in our life, many people like to live in their way. Francis Sinatra used this song and he said, I did it my way. This is the tendency of Paul's modernist generation. Everybody wants to do it in their own way. But even though they claim and demonstrate that they have right to do it in their own way, they are not happy with their own ways. So what is the solution? If we give freedom to people to do their way and they make demonstration and claim to have a right to do it in their own way, why they are not happy? Why are they are not content? Because no matter what, how much we try, we will never going to be pleased in our ways because we know that we were not created to take such way in our life. There is a root for any of us in this world. That is the root we choose. There are also many ways that we can choose to reach our goals. But whatever you start is not as much important than where you will arrive. We, may this, we take decisions, we make choices, but if the end, the goal, the final destination is not according to God's will, we're never going to get, even though we take our own way. The Bible encourages to follow God's direction, to be aware that He is leading the way. Proverbs chapter 6 and 9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Psalms 119 35 said, Direct me in the path of your commands, for there is there I find the light. 119 verse 133 said, They read my, my, my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Can we put the volume a little down, please? The microphone. Button. Thank you. And just a little down. As we just go back to our scripture today, we see that the Apostle Paul, he have a vision. And this vision is to evangelize the Gentiles, to go to preach the gospel, to the end of the war, as Jesus commanded. But he, with much uh, struggles with the uh, Jews, his own people, he decided to share this gospel to the foreigners, the Gentiles. And now we see here one very important section of the book of Acts and, and starting on a new uh, route or a new way for preaching the gospel to all nations. This vision was supported by God. And even though Paul make some decisions that probably today we can argue that he was right or he made a mistake, this decision that he made was also uh, covered by God's grace. And God, at the end of his journey, 
at the end of his ministry, he was doing well or finished well because God allowed him to, do, to take his weight, but also allowed him that he surrendered his ways to God. If we see in chapter 15, there were a problem with the missionary team. Paul and Barnabas, they were together to spread the gospel in all Mino Asia. But in the first three, though, or the first mission journey of the Apostle Paul, there were a problem with Barnabas' nephew. His name was John, they also called him Mark. And he uh, ran away after he saw the persecution of the Jews and also their, their, the dangers of preaching the gospel among the Gentiles. So when they took the second mission treat, Barnabas wanted to take John, as according to chapter 15, verse 37 to 39. And Paul did not think it was wise to take him. So they have an argue there. And they separate and they parted company from that moment. Now Barnabas took his nephew, John, as called Mark, and went to the other side, other region, the south, uh, hitting Africa. And Paul he tried to go to the north, taking uh, Silas with him. But in chapter 16, we see here in verse 1 that he came to Derf and then to Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy. This Timothy was a uh, son of a Gentile and his mother was a Jew. So he recruited as part of his mission team. Now there were three. But in verse 10, we see something in the narrative of this story. Chapter 16, verse 10 says, After Paul has seen the vision, we. Now, who are we? The writer of this book of it is no other than the Dr. Luke. So, it's the first time that this word we appear in the book of Acts. Before this verse, Luke always say they, they, they. But in verse 10, he starts to say we. Assuming many scholars that from that moment, Luke, he joined the missionary team. So now we have Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke that got ready at once to leave for Macedonia. God has human resources to be used according to his plan for our ways, for our journeys, for our work. He, as we said the last week, he has divine connections. We don't know. We are praying for help. We are praying for, for solutions in our life. We are praying for human resources. And God knows all human resources, like Peter was praying in Joppa and Cornelius was praying in Caesarea. These two guys with different visions, they joined their path, their ways to please the Lord. Now, Paul, as probably he felt very discouraged, his best friend Barnabas, he take a different way. He took, they take their own way. Probably Barnabas, if he knew friends in Atra, he would say, okay, Paul, we are brothers in Christ, but let me sing this song for you. I'm going to do my way, my friends in another song. So Paul was very discouraged here. Now who can help him? Like Barnabas, whose name was the person who gave consolation, who counseled people. He was a very important member in his missionary team. Paul was a, a preacher. He was a, a scholar, probably. He studied under Gamaliel school. And even though we don't know if he was married, no. Barnabas, he too, the encouraged, the loving part of the ministry, holding people, praying for people, hugging people, while Paul was preaching and directing uh, this missionary journey and evangelist program in every city of Mino Asia. Now, who can do that after this separation? Who will help Paul in this, in this uh, missionary uh, work? So he probably was praying. He probably was asking God, how can I do this job? Who will help me? Probably Silas, he was now the right person to replace Barnabas. And then we find here that Timothy, he was a real song in Christ for Paul. He received all the love that Paul didn't show to anybody else, but he showed so much love to Timothy that Timothy was the person who could deliver the love of God and the love of the Apostle Paul to all the churches in Mino Asia. Then look, the doctor joining this team and giving also assurance to Paul that he is not alone, that God already have human resources to continue his uh, ministry and to do God's will according to God's plan. Today we have the Bible. 
that I say to Kitsi Yang all the time. The Bible is like our GPS. The GPS is a global position system that satellites control to lead us where we go when we turn on our, uh, the engine of our cars and we want to find a de destination. We have many options and many uh, opportunities to choose our ways to go to this place or another, thanks to the navigation system, the GPS that we have in our cars. But this GPS for our spiritual life is the direction of God's plan for us. God has a plan. His plans are not to harm us, but to prosper us and to give you a future. What is this plan? God has a plan for salvation. GPS. God's plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation. GPS. In ancient ages, people used to watch the stars to counsel the directions in navigation. And later they invented the compass. Nowadays we use this global position system to help us to go everywhere, even in other countries with we don't know the language. Our GPS is to know where we are and where are we going. The GPS of the Bible determines God's plan for salvation. Where are you in God's plan for salvation? Where are you going in God's plans for salvation? This is my message for today for you. When Paul and Silas, Timothy, and now look, they joined the missionary team and started the journey thinking to strengthen the churches in Asia Minio. God has a different plan. God has a different Direction for Poland and Silas, Timothy, and Luke. When you go a different way from the original setting of your GPS in your car, you will hear their message, or you will see in the screen that the GPS is recalculating the directions in order to send you to your destination. God could see that Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke, they thought that yes, this is the best way we can now continue with our missionary journey. But God showed through this chapter 16 of Ed's to this missionary team that he have a different route, a different way to make these missionaries feel the will of God in their time. As we go to see the scripture in verse 6 and 8, we see that Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus will not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. So we see here the intervention of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, to not let these missionaries to go to their own ways. Probably Paul and his missionary team, they were thinking, okay, let's go now to the north because Barnabas and and his nephew is going to Africa, so let's go to the north, the other way, so we don't have conflict with our ministry, and both we can fulfill the will of God. But God didn't allow this missionary team to go to that way. So they say, okay, if we cannot go to the north, let's go to the south. And they went to the south, maybe having a risk to meet Barnabas and uh, Mark, John, over there. So here the Spirit of Jesus don't allow it to do that too. So they didn't go to the north, they didn't go to the south. So what is the next step? What is the other no uh, option? Two times the Spirit of God, that is the Spirit of Jesus, didn't allow this thing to waste their time preaching again where they were already disciples. Remember that this is the second mission trip of the Apostle Paul. And what Barnabas do in his ministry of encouragement is to go to see the other disciples that they already met in the first trip. So the Holy Spirit didn't want the Paul and his companions waste time in doing something that they already had done. They already planted church, they already made disciples, and God wanted to continue to go forward in this mission three, in this plan of God, in this GPS, the God plan of salvation. So God wanted to take the directions where God already calculated the gospel must be preached. And we see that now the Apostle Paul and his team, they had to learn to submit to the vision that God is giving to them. How can we discover whether God is telling us to do something when we plan it to do another thing? How we know that we are taking the right path, the right, the right way, or we are making the right decisions? Paul submitted his plan to God for rejection, acceptance, and modification. We have to do that. We probably we pray a lot. We meditate in the Bible, and we say, okay, God, I think this is the, way, the best way for me to be used by you the rest of this year, 2018. But if you don't give this plan to God, you don't put under the cross of Jesus for be rejected, accepted, or modificated, you cannot be sure that you are pleasing God with the weights that you are taking. God communicates His will to all of us through, first, a miraculous means, like a 
prophecy or dreams, wisdom of some spiritual friend, pastors or leaders in church, a check in the inner spirit, when there is a sense that it, this way not be right in our heart, a feeling of reservation inside of us or something else from someone we trust about the aspect of the plan. When we see that something is now working in peace, in harmony, then we have to pray more and meditate more in God's word and wait for more directions of God according to the circumstances. Some obstacles are seen as a sign for God to uh, desist in our plans. Something happens. We must go into earnest prayer and discussion over the issue, seeking for clarification from God. If you don't have peace in your heart, probably you have to lead your plans to God and putting on his hands for rejection, acceptance, or modification. Now we see in verse 9 that God shows a vision to Paul. Since he couldn't go to the north, he couldn't go to the south, so God had to give it a recalculation in his GPS. In verse 9 we see that during the night, Paul, and Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. The history of Christianity showed that missions movement have always been on the rise when modality and sodality join hands. There are two directions of mission that we can see in the missionary global society. The first one is centrifugal. The word centrifugal means moving or tending to move away from a center. It's when we go to them, from the center to the places or the areas away of the center. This is what normally the concept of mission, mission and mission uh, uh, words, missionary word we know. We send missionaries. Missionaries go to people, go to the nation. Preachers go, go, go was the commandment of Jesus. But now we can see, especially here in Korea, the centripetal movement of mission. It means moving or tending to move toward a center. It's when now the people who need to be ministry, they come to us. 20 years ago, many people came from all over the world and every year still come to Korea. And missionaries dedicated here in Korea to serve foreigners in Korea. After IMF, many of these foreigners, they went back home and they were waiting until God gave another opportunity to come back here to, in Korea. Since the K-pop movement in Korea, Korea became famous again and since the technology like Samsung and Hyundai and other big companies Korea became famous around the world again. And people now are coming back to Korea again and foreigners too. If you have a vision, you are ready. If you don't have a vision, you have to develop that vision. But if God already gave you the vision, He confirmed the vision to you, you must go. You must take actions. God will connect you with people who will support you. Divine connections, as I said the last week. God help Paul sending Timothy and Luke. He gives it more connections. God will provide all your needs. The Apostle Paul received help from people who were there. Like we see Lydia. She offered her house after she was evangelized. God will prosper and make your vision fruitful to get to the aims that he has for you. So after you obey the vision, you will see how this vision will be fulfilled according to God's grace. Verse 13, on the Sabbath, when... We went outside, says Luke, the city ga gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who have gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple clothes from the city of Titaria, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened in her heart to respond to Paul's message. Lydia, she was not a Jew. She was no proselyte in the Jews. And there were no synagogue here in Macedonia, but she was faithful to worship God and to keep the time of prayer. Probably she was praying like Cornelius, God send someone to teach me about this Jesus, to teach me about Christianity. And she became the first European Christian in history, according to the Bible. Why? Because now Macedonia is not Minor Asia, it's not Africa, it's the first city of Europe in time of Paul. So this was the first step to reach the gospel to Europe. And now we see in this foreign region, in Europe, the first fruit 
of the evangelist mission of Paul. A successful woman, businesswoman, the head of her house, we don't know anything about her husband, devote to seek the Lord and hospitable in all their ways. That's the kind of people we need to evangelize. That's the kind of people that we need that from God to help us to continue our ministry. And that's one of my prayer points. I want to meet many leaders here in Seoul. I want to lead many people like Lydia who will help me. Like Achilles and uh, Priscilla. Like Timothy or even Bernabe. Any person who wants to join this mission team, it will be welcome in my ministry. The Lord opened her heart. It is the Lord who makes the war. It is the Lord who will lead the way. It is the Lord who will support the vision. And he made the vision fruitful, as we see here in verse 13. Now we continue in verse 15, celebrating the vision. The scripture says, when she and the members of her house were, were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay in my house. And she continued pursuing the missionary team. God have a different plan. God have a different way. And we need to surrender our plans to God. But the purpose of all of this is not to do our will or to go in our way, but to do His way and to do His will. Remember, follow God's direction is to follow God's GPS, the way of salvation. Because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one's can to the Father except through me. Let's focus this week to preach the gospel of salvation of Jesus to any person. If you need human resources, God will give you human resources. If you need financial resources, God will give you financial resources. But you need to have a clear vision, a clear confirmation of your vision. Counsel with prayer, with leaders, with Christian friends who will support you and help you and give a confirmation of God's plans in your life. Then you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to be afraid because God will tell the same word that he told to me. Don't be afraid. I will be with you. So let your vision be pleased, corrected, modified, and instructed by God's Spirit in Jesus' name.